Good Sunday morning, church family. How y'all doing? You doing good? Great. Love to hear that. Um, my name is Jordan Thurman, for those of you that don't know. I have the privilege to welcome you to church this morning. And, you know, I think since it's such a privilege to welcome, you guys should get to participate in it. So let's take 30 seconds to say hi to each other if you're here. If you're online, just comment, say hello, let us know. You're worshiping with us. I'll check back with you in 30 seconds. All right, if you all will take your seats, or if you're online, stop typing. Go ahead and hit that send button. I would love to see where you are in the middle of your sentence. So, um, like I said, it's good to be here with you all. I um, am curious how you guys are thinking about this season of life. Uh, and, you know, we talk about family during the holidays, right? You know, like we, we talk about that could be a hard time or a fun time with family or... Um, you know, a dysfunctional time. My family used to say we put the fun in dysfunctional. So um, I don't know where that phrase came from. I don't know if it's old or all families use it, but that's what my use. But I do think this is a time that we don't talk about family things being involved. I mean, we just celebrated Mother's Day last week. And, you know, I don't know if you guys are like me, but I have to like go, okay, we got through that one celebration. Now we have to work on Father's Day. That's coming up. But it's also a time of graduations, and, you know, uh, we're getting ready to move into wedding season. So there's a lot of this, like, family, you know, stuff still going on, right? It's not just a once a year around the holidays kind of thing. There's a lot of stuff that goes on. And for some of us, family can be like, huh. But for a lot of us, including myself this morning, family's like, huh. Um, you know, so... <laughs> um, yeah, sorry. I, I'm just being real, being honest, right? So, um, and, and it, I wonder why that is. I think the reason is it's a testament to our relationships with each other, right? We've had these relationships that are life-giving, and to be honest, we've had some that are kind of maybe life-draining, and that can leave us with this idea of that it's hard to connect. It's hard to be in relationship with one another. Um, and I, I, but I think it's so important because I think we were designed to be you know, and I'm not talking just your romantic relationships. I'm talking like we need that social support, those friends. You know, Jesus himself had a group of 12 men following him around. He knew the importance of social relationship, right? And, but sometimes it can be so hard. We want to close ourselves off because we've been hurt before from relationships. Or we have that crazy family member that's like, uh, what if I have to find other crazy family members? And we talk about church family. You know, I even told you this morning when I greeted you, hello, church family. We are all brothers and sisters. Um, and sometimes, you know, that, I, that can leave you feeling uncomfortable. Like, oh, I have to engage in that. But it doesn't have to be scary to engage because this is a family that is supportive. This is a family that's built of love and connection that's going to help you grow. Now, Pastor Jim's going to talk more about that later today, but before we do any of that, we're going to check in with Molly and Cliff, I'm guessing, for our Sunday Fun Day recap. I don't know who else does it, so it's probably them. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another Sunday Fun Day recap with Cliff and Molly. Last week, we learned the main point, keep going even when it gets tough, mm -hmm. right? So this week, we'll dig deep into the lesson about Paul and Silas in prison. And the main point, you can choose joy even when life gets hard. Yeah, that's going to be a good one. So the preschoolers last week learned about days three and four in the creation story. Ooh, and this week, they're going to focus only on day five. So we hope you guys can join us downstairs every Sunday at 1030 a.m. or online at 715 p.m. every Sunday evening. So we hope you guys have a great week. See you guys. Bye. And we're going to continue our worship with some songs this morning. So would you uh, stand and join us as we worship?
morning, Lord, we just come as your children, as your creation, unique, but as one in heart and mind, just to worship you, praise you for those things that you have blessed us with in our lives. But Lord, we are also, some of us a broken people, some of us just cracked or maybe just chipped, or some of us have been shattered completely by the worries of life. And we know, Father, that you are an amazing healer, that you can take all of those pieces, those cracks, those chips, and put them back together and make us whole again. We just ask, Father, that you look into our hearts and our minds today and see where we need healed. And Father, we know that we are not anything without you. And we just pray, Father, that you will continue to bless us, that you will keep us safe, watched over, and help us to be your light, your hands, your feet to the world around us. And now, with the confidence of children, of your children, let us join in that prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading today is from the New Testament, from Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus, Ephesians 4, verses 1 through 7, and verses 11 through 16. So let's draw near as we hear the word of God. And Paul writes, Therefore I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling. For you have been called by God. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the Spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. For there is one body and one Spirit, just as you have been called to one glorious hope for the future. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all, in all, and living through all. However, he has given each one of us a special gift through the generosity of Christ. Now, these are the gifts Christ gave the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly as each part does its own special work. It helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You know, 20 20 years ago, uh, a woman by the name of Adelina Dominguez uh, passed away in San Diego, California. Now, her death is noteworthy because... At that time, according to the Guinness Book of Records, she was the oldest living American. At 114 years of age, she outlived all her children and some of her grandchildren. Before her death, a reporter from the Associated Press asked the secret of her longevity, and she responded, I knew God had a purpose for my life. I knew God had a purpose for my life, and living a life of purpose makes all the difference in the world, and God has a purpose. He's got a purpose for you, for me, for all people everywhere, and that purpose is easy. It's not easy. It's simple. It's follow Jesus. That's our purpose. Be Jesus followers. We're called to walk in his steps. So this morning we continue our series entitled A Walk in the Park. Now the focus of this series has been on how walking with Jesus is not easy. It's far from a walk in the park. 
And so far in our series, we've talked about how when we walk with Jesus, we're called to, to walk in love, walk in action, walk in discipline for Christ's sake in the world. And today we're going to explore how when Jesus calls us to follow him, he's calling us to walk together in fellowship because we were formed to be a part of God's family. Check out Ephesians 1 verse 5. It says this, His unchanging plan has always been to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. Bottom line, through faith in Jesus, we become the sons and daughters of our heavenly Father and the brothers and sisters together of Jesus Christ. In Jesus, we become the whole entire family of God. In Jesus, we are brothers and sisters together for all eternity because we were made to last forever. And since we were created for fellowship, to live together as God's family forever, it's important that we practice getting along now because forever is a long, long time. And fellowship is the word the Bible uses to describe loving each other, loving one another. In John, 1 John 4, verse 21, we find this. It says, And God himself has commanded that we must love not only him, but our Christian brothers and sisters too. God calls us to love one another, to love fellow believers. And fellowship means loving the family of God. So remember, the church is far more than a building. It's, it's more than a worship service. The church is a people. It, it's a family. It's God's family. And to give us another perspective on family, I want to share a, a, a one of the final scenes of the movie, My Big Fat Greek Wedding. Now, I don't know if you have seen that. It came out 20 years ago, 20 years ago, 2002. And it is ranked, it's in my top five, well, at least top 10 movies of all time for me. And this movie set, uh, centers around a, a, a dad uh, named Gus uh, Portocolis and his daughter, Tula, and her eventual husband, Ian Miller. Now, Ian was not Greek, so Gus did not want him marrying his daughter. Greeks have to marry Greeks, Gus would say on and on throughout the movie. But at the end of the movie, after Gus has finally relented to uh, agree to have his daughter, Tula, Mary Ian, and at the wedding reception, following the wedding, Gus, who always liked to illustrate how every word, every word comes uh, from a Greek root uh, word, shared this unique perspective on family. He says the, uh, root were, uh, the root of the word Miller come from a Greek word Mila, meaning apple. So there you go. And our name, Portocolos, is come from the word meaning orange. So today here, we have apples and oranges. We're all different now, but in the end, we're just all fruit. And the fact is, the church really is a lot like a basket of fruit. We're all different. We're all unique. We're all delightful and nourishing. But we're all just fruit. We're all just God's fruit. We're a family, and a family that loves one another. For God created us to be a part of his family forever. And in God's family, there are four levels of what we call fellowship. And before we take a closer look at these four levels, let me pray for us. Let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord our rock, and our redeemer. Amen. Okay, let's dig in and take a look at the four levels of fellowship. So the first level 
is membership. You know, choosing to belong. Remember, belonging is always a choice. Belonging is a choice. In other words, it's up to us to find a church family to be a part of. And Paul reminds us in Ephesians 4 verse 1, he says again, Therefore I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, he was writing this from jail, uh, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling, for you have been called by God. Bottom line, God calls us to live in community together, to be a part of a church family because, again, we were formed for God's family. The fact is, the Christian life is not just a matter of believing. It's a matter of belonging. See, we must choose to belong. Fellowship begins with belonging, with making that decision, that choice. God wants us to identify and make the choice to be a part of his family. So have you ever heard someone say, uh, yes, you know, I'm a Christian, I'm a Jesus follower, but I really don't like church and I don't like being a part of a church. Well, unfortunately, that doesn't make any sense. And God says we don't have that option. The church is where we live out what it means to be a Jesus follower. To choose to live apart from the church is like saying, you know, I'm a baseball player, but I don't want to be a part of any team. Or, you know, I'm a tuba player, but I don't want to be in anybody's band. Or I'm a soldier, but I don't want to be a part of any platoon. You know, that doesn't work. A Jesus follower without a church family is what the Bible calls an orphan. And God created us to be a part of his family. We were formed for God's family. So the first basic level of fellowship is belonging, is membership, choosing to belong. Now the second level of fellowship is friendship, learning to share. Listen again to verse 2 of Ephesians chapter 4. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Paul reminds us here that God calls us to be patient with one another. In other words, we're called to share our lives with each other. And check out Acts 2, verse 44. Now here, the church is just beginning to form, and it says in verse 44, And all the believers met together constantly and shared everything they had. Note the words, met together and shared. Now the early church, the first Jesus followers, teach us two very important things here. One, we can't develop friendships without meeting together. And two, we can't develop friendships without sharing with one another. Bottom line, the more we meet, the more we share our lives with one another, the closer we become, the closer we're going to get. You see, we can't develop the family God wants us to become simply by showing up on Sunday mornings for worship. Worship on Sunday mornings is celebration. It's remembering who and whose we are, that we're an Easter people, the tomb is empty. It's hearing the word proclaimed, and it's all very important. But it's not fellowship. Fellowship happens in small groups when smaller numbers of God's people come together frequently to share their lives with each other. In that context, they hold each other up and encourage one another. They challenge and hold one another accountable in their walk with Christ. In that context, they're experiencing church, true church, they're experiencing friendship, true friendship, and they're experiencing family, true family. Some of you will remember the movie, It's a Wonderful Life. 
Again, this is on my top five of uh, all-time movies. Uh, and you don't have to watch It's a Wonderful Life uh, only at Christmas, okay? You can watch it anytime. So um, uh, the, the movie It's a Wonderful Life is about a man by the name of George Bailey who is the proprietor of a building and loan institution and he runs into a jam, some financial trouble. The trouble begins when George's absent-minded uncle misplaces eight thousand dollars now george realized he could go to jail because of his uncle's mistake and as a result he just kind of wished he had never been born but then clarence oddbody remember the angel second class uh is dispatched from the heavens to uh, show george what the world would have been like had he not been born George discovered that in spite of his financial woes and challenges, he was still a wealthy man because of the investments he had made in so many people throughout his life and the friendships he had gained as a result. In the final scene of the movie, uh, now at this point, Clarence Oddbody had earned his wings so he was now angel first class uh, as all of George's friends gather to help bail him out of his predicament. They're lining up, putting money in this box. Uh, George looks down, he sees a book. He sees a book that mysteriously arrived and it's the, the adventures of Tom Sawyer. And on the inside page, there's a note written to George from Clarence, now angel first class. And he says, Dear George, remember no man is a failure who has friends. And you know what? No person is a failure who has fellowship, who has family, who has friends. And that's why God calls us to gather in smaller groupings of people so that we can be the church for each other and develop strong friendships that will provide support, encouragement, and accountability throughout our lives. So have we discovered a small group? Can be a Sunday school class, can be a ministry team, can be a Bible study group, can be a fellowship group, can be a fun group. But have we discovered a small group? You know, Terry McLean is director of uh, Discipleship Mission, and if we don't have one, we'd like to be a part of one, you can reach out to her, and she'd be more than happy to connect you. So that's the second level. Third level of fellowship is partnership, doing my part, doing our part. You know, partnership is realizing that we've got, all got a contribution to make, that the family of God needs each and every one of us to be contributing, to be partnering together to do God's work in the world. Listen to what Paul says in Ephesians 4, verse 16. He says, under his direction, under God's direction, the whole body is fitted together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. Now, there's a lot there in that verse. Paul reminds us that when each of us does our part, when each person is partnering for the cause of Christ in the world, when we use, each use the gifts, talents, and passion God has given us in the church, the result is threefold. One, we help each other grow in our walk with Christ. Two, we make the church healthy, growing, and vibrant. And three, we make it possible for the church to be full of love. Now, you got to admit, that's pretty amazing, pretty cool. But remember, there's no such thing as Lone Ranger Christians. We're called to be a part of community and to do our part in community. Listen to 1 Corinthians 3, verse 9. 
It says we work together as partners who belong to God. Note the word partners. We are partners working together for Christ's sake in the world. Fred Craddock, former professor of preaching at the Chandler School of Theology in Atlanta, Georgia, tells the story of when he served this little mission church in the mountains of Tennessee just following his graduation from seminary. In this little church, they had this special custom. They would have a baptismal service on Easter Sunday every year in the evening at sundown. And the service was held near a little lake that was right by the church. First, the candidates for baptism would be baptized, immersed in the lake, and after they had changed into their dry clothing, there would then be a bonfire, and everyone would gather around the fire. They'd begin to sing their, their favorite hymns, and then, said Craddock, uh, 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 one of the members of this small congregation would begin to introduce the new people, the ones who had just been baptized. The chosen member would give their names, where they lived, and their occupation. After they were introduced, the rest of the church then would form a circle around them. Then each person around the circle would give her or his name and say something like, Hi, my name is such and such, and if you ever need somebody to do washing and ironing, call on me. Then the next, hi, my name is so-and-so, and if you ever need anybody to chop wood, just call on me. Then the next would say, hi, my name is, and if you ever need anybody to babysit, just call on me. And then the next would say, hey, my name is, and if you ever need anybody just to sit with the sick, please just call on me, and so on and so forth around the circle they would go. Now, you see, that's called partnership. That's fellowship, offering a part of ourselves to another. And that's what the church of Jesus Christ is all about. Because remember, we were formed to be a part of God's family. And the last level of fellowship is what we're just calling kinship. Loving believers like family. Listen to what Paul says in Romans 12 verse 10. He says, be devoted to each other like a loving family. Excel in showing respect for each other. See, we're called to love believers like their family. Now, the word for fellowship in the Bible is the Greek word koinonia. Now, koinonia means being as committed to each other as we are to Jesus. This is the deepest level, you see, of, of fellowship sacrificing for each other. It's loving others as Jesus loved us. It's offering our lives as Jesus offered his life on our behalf. Koinonia is being there for one another, being present with each other in times of crisis, offering a shoulder to one another to lean on. It's walking in when everyone else is walking out because we were formed to be a part of God's family. So as we close this morning, I'd like to invite us to, to make our pew, our chair, an altar of prayer. And as we pray today, let's take a moment and reflect on these questions. Let's ask ourselves, how am I doing at walking with Jesus? How am I doing with walking with Jesus? How am I doing at walking in fellowship with all God's people, the church of Jesus Christ? Have we been holding on to that first level 
you know, membership? Or have we moved beyond that to level two, three, and four? Are we in a small group where we can grow in faith, hope, life, service, and love together in Jesus Christ? Are we doing our part in the family, the family of God, making a contribution, sharing our lives, our gifts, our abilities with others? Have we experienced real church at Urbana United Methodist Church? You know, and if, if we say, well, I'm not so sure on that last one, just remember this. If we don't make the investment, we're not going to experience real church. If we don't make the investment, if we don't invest in one another for Christ's sake in the world, we're going to miss out. Because remember, we were formed to be a part of God's family. And when Jesus said, come, follow me, remember, that also includes walking in fellowship with Jesus and one another. Let us be silent now before God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, now we continue our time of worship by celebrating the opportunity uh, to return a portion of that which God has given us uh, back to the church for, in support of its work and mission in the world. So right now you can see a slide that kind of shares the different ways we can support the ongoing work, mission, and ministry of Urbana Church. And as we prayerfully think about our response uh, today, uh, consider this. You know, throughout the entire Old Testament, we see how the people of God would offer burnt offerings on altars to honor and to worship God. Now, they presented offerings during annual festivals after God had delivered them from harm and they would do it to ask for forgiveness. Thankfully, we no longer need to present burnt offerings to the Lord. You know, Jesus paid that price for us once and for all. However, the principle of coming to God with a sign of honor and sacrifice still makes sense. Money represents the time and effort we put into earning a paycheck. We, in effect, give a part of our lives in order to receive funds, money back. Therefore, when we give a financial offering to God, we're giving a part of our lives to Him. The incredible part is that God, the God of the universe doesn't require that we give 100% of our finances back to Him. He simply asks that we give sacrificially. And that will look different, realize, for each and every person. For some, giving sacrificially could mean returning $5. And for others, it will be a lot more than that. The amount isn't the point. The act of presenting an offering to God is what matters. So let's gather our gifts together and offer them to God in gratitude and praise and in support of the ongoing work, mission, and ministry of the Urbana United Methodist Church. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for the family of God. We thank you for the church of Jesus Christ. We thank you for the many ways that the family of God is used by you to extend your kingdom throughout our community and around the world continue to bless, continue to unite us, your body, your family, so that we can continue to serve as your hands and feet to the world around us. So Lord, as we return a portion of that which you have provided, 
We ask that you bless these gifts, use these gifts, use our lives, our hands, our all to do your work in the world. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks, Jim, for that awesome message on family. I think that's really timely and important in our world, especially as we're getting reconnected after the last couple years of life. Uh, family is so important, and uh, that's what we are today. Amen? So uh, to be a part of this family, there's a couple ways you can start to connect with us. And if you're new, uh, we would love to, for you to join this, this family with us and get to know you better. You can text the word NEW to 937 Five six three four five nine three, and that'll take you to a link to a connect card where we just get to know a few things about you. And when you fill it out, we make a donation in your name uh, to one of the three charities of your choice on our connect card. Uh, another way you can go deeper with that connection with us and getting to know family is pizza with the pastors. It happens the second Sunday of every month. Um, we would love to have lunch with you uh, after service. It's about half hour, 45 minutes, we tour the church, you get to meet some more of the leadership, the staff, ask any questions you might have, you know, what does it mean to be a United Methodist, what does it mean to be a part of this church, what does it mean uh, to, to serve and volunteer and be a part of this family, that those kind of questions, uh, we, we can answer those at that time. Text the word pizza to that same number, 937-563-4593. Uh, another part of being part of the family is volunteering and serving. This is Warehouse Week coming up. Uh, it's where God's love meets tangible needs. It's our food pantry, and uh, we would love to have you come out and serve. It is 9 a.m. to noon every day through Thursday, and then in the evening, it's 6 p.m. to 7.30 on Tuesday. So if you can't come during the day, you can come Tuesday evening and be a part of that. Uh, the next Red Cross blood drive is Thursday, June 2nd, 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. It'll be upstairs in the core. And uh, every time you donate blood, you can save up to three lives with your donation. To sign up, you can go to redcrossblood.org or call 1-800-RED-CROSS. Also, being part of that small group is what Jim talked about today. And uh, Terry is doing one on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. starting May 18th. And check out this video for more info. Hi, it's Terry from Urbana UMC. This summer, I'm going to be doing something called Walk With Me. It's every Wednesday at the park, and we're going to be diving into scripture and kind of figuring out who God created us to be. Can you define yourself without using what you do for your job or in your home? It's a tough question. And so this summer, we're going to be walking for self-care and then also walking with other people and praying and walking with God to discover who he created us to be. So join us every Wednesday beginning May 18th at 7 p.m. We'll be meeting at the main stage. So there you go. You can text that word walk to that same number, 937-563-4593. We also have our, our monthly anxiety support meeting coming up this month on May 23rd. And Sean Wolf will be talking about free resources for kids and mental health. So if you know somebody who struggles with anxiety or you yourself are struggling with anxiety, this is a great opportunity uh, to, to join a group of people who are talking about that. Uh, our last couple announcements are the not this coming Sunday, but the following two Sundays after that will be unity services. So one service, 10 o'clock on May 29th, which is our Memorial Day service. And then one service on June 5th, which is our big Sunday service uh, at 10 a.m. as well. Memorial Day service will pay homage to those who have passed before, on before, uh, who have served our country. And then on big Sunday, we will have, uh, it'll be a kids, it's going to be a family service. We, we kind of talked about this earlier this year when we did our vision casting Sunday, that we would have uh, fifth Sundays that come about would be more of a family style service. It'll be a shorter service. We'll have the kids up here doing worship for us. And then we'll have service projects that day. Uh, this, this time around, we'll be cleaning up the bike trail and, um, and uh, packaging hygiene kits for the youth center. Uh, but we'll also be having baptisms that day, which is really exciting. And we would love to, if you've been interested in getting baptized, we would love for that to happen for you. Uh, we got a couple of people signed up already. We're going to put a tank right here in the middle of the, the room uh, if you want to get immersed. We also have a baptism over there if you want to get sprinkled or you don't want to get all wet. We got multiple ways we can baptize you. So uh, I even bought a, um, an aquarium heater, so it'll be warm when you go in. So if you're interested in getting baptized, we are making it happen. 
Um, but you can text the word baptism to 937-563-4593 to sign up, and we would love to have that opportunity to baptize you. All right, would you go ahead and stand with us and help us out on this last song? It's called Reason to Praise, and everybody should have a reason to praise, no matter what you're going through in life. You're here. Um, it's a beautiful day. Um, you've got friends. You've got a church family. And most of all, you've got our Savior. So find a reason to praise. Sunday. Uh, I was thinking about how I should have, could have, would have, but maybe to respect you all, because I know some of you would not like it, bringing my phone up and taking a picture. And this is my family photo. And I'd show it off. And I'd be like, 
That's my brother Tim right there. I'm super proud of him. You should have seen his Motivational Monday video. That's my sister Ellie over there. She just graduated from Asbury. <laughs> That's my brother and sister back there, the Smith family. They have a rocking business right now. And then I've got my family over there, the De La Ramas. I remember when they brought Marcus home, we brought him food. And then my brother Ron over there has the best dance moves that nobody's ever got to see. And I could go on and on, but we don't want to be here forever. <laughs> because you guys are my family. And that's what it's like to be the kinship, you know, that PJ was talking about. So I think we should celebrate each other and tell, remind each other, like, hey, I'm proud of you. I love that you did that. That is so awesome. And I hope somebody does that to you guys this week. And you're able to do it. Show that love to your family this week, okay? And not just your family, but your family. Have a great week, guys. You're the God of the breakthrough. When I'm breaking down, you'll be worried.